The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Hi, I'm Mary Rosak, the Director of Communications for Albany County, and this is Albany County News. In the next 28 minutes or so, I hope you're going to uh, find out some very interesting things about the organization that we're going to talk about. And that's the, the goal of this program um, each and every month, is to bring a taste of Albany County to you and let you know how you can benefit from things that are going on around here. Uh, joining us uh, today is Janet Silver, the current president of the Albany County Bar Association. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And the brand new executive director of the association, Marquita Rhodes. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. When I hear Albany County Bar Association, first of all, I think that's something I'm never going to need. I hope I never need a lawyer, right? I mean, people, <laughs> people are always thinking about that. But when you think about the Bar Association in the name, some people might you know, glaze over right away and say, okay, it's something for lawyers, not for me. What is the Albany County Bar Association? What do they do, and how, how do they benefit the community? The Albany County Bar Association benefits the local community in so many different ways. I think one of our major contributions to the area is the pro bono services that we provide. Um, we've been providing free civil legal services, especially in family court matters, for over 20 years. Um, it started with a concept with Albany County Family Court saying we need help with people who don't have legal representation, learning how to fill out forms. What does it mean to be a pro se litigant? So we've had volunteers for years down at family court that has assisted petitioners as they came in looking for assistance. That's grown to now having two part-time attorneys who are taking on direct uh, civil legal service cases. And so if you are somebody who is low income and needs assistance in civil cases, whether it's family court, landlord, tenant, um, our office can help. So what, is, what does that mean? Does that mean that, that I were, if I, if I were one of those people, I would call? You or can call the point? office, absolutely. You can also go online and get information or email one of our pro bono attorneys. There's an intake screening process. Um, our services are funded with state grant money, and so we have to make sure that individuals qualify for service. If they do not qualify for our service, um, we try to refer to somebody else. So we also partner with Legal Aid of Northeastern New York. And the legal project. So, for instance, if it involves domestic violence, we would refer the legal project. If it is a case that is better suited for legal aid of Northeastern New York, our pro bono and intake department would refer over to the other areas. So, we try to serve what we call as kind of the last resort. That if the other um, legal service providers don't provide a service, then we we do that work in our office. I'm not going to ask you to get down into the weeds on this, but when we're talking about qualifying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people, most people say, you know what, if I have to hire a lawyer, it's going to cost me a fortune, mm -hmm. so I've got to qualify for something. But the reality is there, there, there are benchmarks to, to being able to qualify, as you said. Correct. So what are what may be some of those general It's benchmarks? usually 200% um, of the poverty line for an individual to have free representation. If it's not free representation, um, we also have a lawyer referral service line whereby attorneys have signed up with our, our um, bar association, and they'll give um, a half an hour of consultation for $25 and sometimes then is a reduced fee if that individual determines to hire that attorney going forward in their case. So it's another service. So you could say, um, I need an attorney to draft a will and you may not qualify for free service, um, but then we could refer you if you were interested to another attorney who has signed up in our referral system for $25 for a half an hour. So let's say we go to the website. Mm -hmm. And you just said you want uh, you want an attorney for a will. Is there a way to to look up look that up to search on online? No, you can't search. Um, how it works in our in our office is, that, and if you want an attorney through the referral line, you actually have to call. And we, what we do is we rotate through so that if we have um, you know five or six attorneys who do trust in estates, we would refer in an order, and we try to give people two or three names when they call. So it's not just one referral. They have 
some options of who they may contact. So Marquita, would, would you be one of the people that would take that call? I'm not, but we have a specialist that is there from 9.30 every day until 1.30. So it is actually a physical person that vets and talks through what kind of particular attorney you might need and or if you qualify right there for a service that they can refer you to. That actually, it, it sounds terrific because so many times if you're going online, there, there's nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to figure it out yourself, you know, it, it seems impossible sometimes. So to be able to call someone and talk to, to someone who specializes really in that and can, can help you match at least some names to, to get into the groove and start and start moving things along, that sounds wonderful. Your experience has been, right now, it's, it's still very new, very fresh. Um, what is, has been your experience that people are calling about at this at this point, or or is it still so so young in the process? It, it runs the gamut, and we actually <laughs> have had so many discussions and have expanded how many categories we we refer to, and certainly there's there's more to come. Uh, I think a big one is uh, the the Boris. I think that has to do with the time of year, mm -hmm. but uh, personal injury is also a really big one that we get calls about, just asking basic general questions and then referring them to the appropriate attorney. Hmm, interesting. So um, divorce, um, different work-related mm -hmm. um, issues, yeah. I, as you indicated. Is, are there, I know you, you offer workshops as well, are the workshops or, or continuing education credit, I know would be um, specific to lawyers, but are there things that you actually offer for the, for the general public or refer them to areas where um, where you have, other than just that phone call and, and that kind of thing. Is that something that the Bar Association does or something that you're... So we participate a lot with Albany Law School and partnering okay. when they do like the Senior Citizens Law Day mm -hmm. or they did an LGBT Day or a Veterans Day this okay. year where they open the law school for either brief advice or tabling. Um, we also partner with a lot of other not-for-profits in the local area to get the word out about our services. So Next Step, um, which is an organization for women um, up on Delaware Avenue for women who are recovering from alcohol and drug. Um, we partner with them to try and help those women with whatever other legal issues they have. Interfaith um, Shelter for the Homeless is another local organization that we partner with a lot and we actually send pro bono and staff down once a month to help those individuals who are being served by Interfaith. Wow, so what what is the response when, when there is a partnership like that for the, like the Senior Law Day? I think is that May, I wanna say is that May, rather May or they May did it this year in um, October, but did it used to be yeah. back in May. Okay. Um, I think this year they had over a thousand people who came wow. through the law school that day, um, and it's everything from my will to health care proxy. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just basic forms and not knowing where to get the information or who to call. Wow, that that almost seems overwhelming when you think about it. A thousand a thousand people for a single event really talks about the need. Mm -hmm. So when we, um, we think about the Bar Association also, we do think about that continuing education. Mm -hmm. So I know from a lawyer's perspective, can you talk a little bit about the, the, the types of um, CLEs? That, uh, that you we, our CLEs vary from year to year. We try to stay current on topics. And so if the legislature and the governor create a new law, then we try to make sure that attorneys are educated on whatever that new law may be or changes to our system. We also do what I call our traditional programs. And so for younger attorneys who are just starting a practice, they have to take live CLEs. And that's a cost to them, especially if they're small and solo, which we have a lot here in Albany County. Um, so we do a lot of basics on how how to handle a traffic ticket, how to draft a will, how to do a basic real estate closing. Mm -hmm. um, and we also try to connect them to other attorneys so they start building that professional network. Um, we also utilize our judges here. We are so lucky in Albany to have the Court of Appeals, to have the Appellate Division, to have our Supreme Court, local courts and federal courts. We partner with them a lot too to make sure we have programs and services that meet their needs. So for instance, the federal courts when they went to electronic filing, we did a lot of continuing ed on how to use those systems. Hmm. So the attorneys, but also their paralegals and their staff knew how to use those new systems as they were being implemented. What are we talking about in terms of, of membership? 
and for, for the bar We currently have 1,100 members in our association, and there's about 4,000 practicing attorneys in Albany. A lot actually work for government. Okay. Um, and so that's one area we're always looking at, how do we better serve um, attorneys in public service or who work for our various state agencies in New York? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you just hit on something that I think some people might be thinking about, and, and, and all of a sudden it's just suddenly clicked. When I even said at the Bar Association, what is the difference and how do you differentiate yourself from, from something, uh, an association on a statewide level and the county level? What, what are the differences? Um, funny you should ask. We just had a long conversation about this last night. Um, NISBA to us is a partner. And so the New York State Bar Association or even the trial lawyers will be a lot more, what I'm going to say, content heavy or help you build statewide network of colleagues. And so if you are um, a litigator, it's great to know litigators in Long Island. But I think what we do, and we do it well, is making sure there's a community here in Albany. So the attorneys who are practicing here know one another. If there are issues that the attorneys need assistance with, how do we provide that assistance to them? Um, and I think it's also those opportunities for lawyer referral, for client referrals, for pro bono services. And so attorneys now, especially new attorneys, have the requirement that they have to have 50 hours of pro bono to be licensed. We can assist those attorneys in getting that 50 hours here in our local court. And who actually tracks that then? Would, would you be tracking, like when you're saying the 50 hours, how does that get They have to track it themselves and they have to report it when they do their registration for licensure. Okay. So what we're really, we're, and, and I know Mark, if you can jump in any, any time, we're, I think what we're talking about really is a very strong professional networking it system. It is. And I think at the county level, uh, which makes us a little bit different, is we have that opportunity to build on what Janet said, to connect them in a social setting also with the judges that they're going to be in, appearing in front of. And in particular, again, to Albany County, you have so many different courts being the capital. And uh, it's, it's a very unique experience that I think differentiates us from the larger organizations statewide. As an outsider, you just said another interesting point, that as an outsider, not a member of the legal community, when um, when you just said connecting the judges and the lawyers, and I think that there might be a mindset out there, there might be the thought that you know they're very separate, and you wouldn't necessarily have them you know, talking together because it's, you know, they're two very different kinds of entities. What What is that relationship like, and how do you build those relationships? Well, I think the association is very uh, integral into that because it does allow this social, safe platform for them to be able to engage with one another. I think that there's a, a very particular professionalism that comes with being mm -hmm. in the legal field, whether the judiciary or on the attorney side. And it's interesting, right? They talk mm -hmm. about the bench and the bar, and it, it really is a historical uh, prestige, and they have to respect it. So sure. uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting position to, to play within the association association, social networks, and to be able to connect with them in a different level. I think the other thing that's interesting is most of the members of the judiciary were members of our association when they were practicing lawyers. Okay. And so they build those relationships in that network when they were practicing attorneys. And then as they get either elected or elevated to various judicial positions, they still remain our members. They still come to our holiday parties. They still come mm -hmm. to events sure. because that is part of their network um, mm -hmm. versus, I think, some other um, areas like you know in the state bar. You may not do a state bar event as, an, as a judge because you don't have that same network. I think we do have that okay. community. Okay. Understood. Tell me, before we, we continue on and, and we talk more about some of the other programs and services, Janet, tell me a little bit about your background. I know you're the current president. I am the current president. I've been on the Albany County Bar Association board for the last eight years. Um, I practice at Hinman Straub in Albany. I've been there for the last 13. And I focus mostly on areas of human services and education. So here locally, I work with um, St. Catharines, LaSalle School, Vander Heiden Hall, making sure that they have the funding the services that they need for children who are in foster care or how do we provide community prevention services in our local um, areas and um, on the school side it's more special education private schools for kids who can't be served by traditional public schools 
Wow. So you, you know, lucky 13, yeah. right? When we're talking about 13 years. So you really, you've been entrenched in, I am. in law and in, in the association for quite some time. Uh, a reminder, we are talking with the current president of the Albany County Bar Association, Janet Silver, and executive director, Marquita Rhodes. Um, Marquita, let's talk a little bit about your background sure. coming, coming here now to uh, sure. our association. So my background is a little bit of a kaleidoscope of project management, marketing, and communications. I have had experience working with the Department of Defense, uh, international branding firm, and most recently in economic development at the Downtown Albany Business Improvement District. So the background bringing from uh, organization and management of nonprofit, and really picking a field that uh, was new and exciting and extremely challenging was uh, a huge focus. So I think the legal field fills that pretty well. Well, congratulations um, on, on that appointment. And I think anytime someone new comes in, it gives an opportunity for um, an organization to take a look and say, OK, now we have someone who has this um, particular mm -hmm. skill set. And, and how might that uh, be a great advantage to us? Very strong marketing. Marquita is, is what you've got. Um, I, and I know having worked very closely with you um, in, in other projects, as you come into this position, what do you see as some of, or, or have you had time yet even to say, these are some of my particular kinds of goals to market the association? Well, I think that uh, they're aligned perfectly with the, what the board strategy is, and that's to gain uh, a new relevance moving forward for membership. And it's not unusual for a lot of associations, whether they're legal or not, to be going through this kind of identification and, and really looking at what are we really doing for 2016 and beyond. And so really making the nucleus of the association strong. And I, I was thinking about that this past week as we were gearing up for the holiday party last night and thinking about what is the connection with the association. And it really is this opportunity catalyst for the legal field not only to connect in the community in and of itself, which we talked about, but exterior to it. And so connecting all those pieces and parts so everybody in the association can talk about it in the same voice, I think is one place where I really can have some impact. So stay tuned. OK, <laughs> we, we will stay tuned. Now, talking about the numbers that uh, you referred to earlier, Janet, I know um, you were saying about 1,100 in the membership, mm -hmm. looking at a number of about 4,000 4, overall. Mm -hmm. You know, not so bad. A 20, 25 percent of, of the of the total market. You take a look at it. It's certainly not oversaturated, um, but still some room for for some growth. Yeah. yeah, I think we would like to double that if if it was possible. But back to what Janet was saying, we have some great inroads to make with the public attorneys who often have um, some of their uh, CLEs paid for by the government and um, are even provided. So really finding out and listening to our constituents on what do you really need and, and how can we provide that and how can you be a part of that solution? Well, I, I find particularly interesting also, I think in, in the last month or so, I, I and it may have already started, um, but I'm aware that Albany County and our law department will yes. be participating in hosting some of those um, CLE, mm -hmm. yes. uh, kind of like, I, I hesitate to say a lunch and learn, but that's you know very similar to be able to do that. It was, and we were just actually very fortunate to be able to partner with the county, um, Albany County hosting did a local juvenile justice conference for county attorneys from all over the state. It was a two-day conference in November. Mm -hmm. And so we partnered with the county and certified all of the CLEs um, mm -hmm. for all the county attorneys all over the state who were actually here um, for the program that was being offered by Albany County. And it was a terrific event that had great response. And we were really happy to be able to partner with well, the county on that. That's wonderful. And I'm, and I'm, I'm pleased with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> as the county. Um, let's talk about, we, we were talking about programs and services, and there are so many other things um, that you offer. I know we talked about the pro, uh, pro bono, but there is uh, a foundation. There is. And so, I'll, about that. so that'll be my next role. Um, as I finish uh, the, my current presidency for the Bar Association in January, I'll take over as president of the Albany County Bar Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the foundation, um, one of its major contributions every year is we do an annual run against domestic violence in conjunction with Law Day um, in May. And it's either usually held at the Crossings here in Colony or it used to be held in Washington Park. About three, four hundred runners. And the money raised from that, we turn around and we give to grants out um, in the community for supporting domestic violence um, organizations. And so last night at our ho 
holiday party, we were fortunate to be able to award about $20,000 to local organizations, which included Equinox, Albany County Crime Victims Association. There's a great new organization that's helping women who have experienced domestic violence by running and, and therapeutic needs behind mm -hmm. that. So we're really excited about being able to raise money every year to be able to support local domestic violence organizations here in Albany County. That's wonderful. Thank you. How uh, are the organizations selected? Is it an application process? If someone's watching, is there somewhere that they can say, okay, wow, this was a time of year now. I know a great organization. How can I pitch it? So the application process usually starts in the summer and we'll post on our website. Um, we're going to try and do a better job, I think, about advertising that ability um, to apply for the grants. It is an application. It's not a very strenuous application, but we want to make sure that we understand where the money is going, how the services are going to be utilized, how many people are going to be benefited, and then the board of the foundation screens those applications and we make awards every year based on the available funding. So the more runners we have at the race, and the more money raised means the more money that we're able um, to provide to grants. Certainly. Is it a highly competitive process when you're taking a look at the applications? This year it was. This year we had um, four or five grant applications, and the applications were for more than what we actually had um, funding to actually award. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, I don't think anyone got the full amount that they were really hoping for. But um, you know, in other years, we've been able to do better because we've raised a little bit more on the race. So um, it, the weather always has a huge impact on how many people People oh, sure. come out to run um, sure. in May, and this year it was a little cold. I think it was a couple snowflakes this year. <laughs> well, certainly not. Like maybe not we should schedule it next year for December, right? Because uh, right. You know, we've had, we've had sixty degrees of, of late. Um, so Marquita, Marquita, are you a runner? Uh, Recovering runner. Recovering. <laughs> I, I am uh, charged to get back into it, certainly, because I have to participate in this run. So. Well, certainly in the marketing of it, you're, you're, yes. you have a, a little, yes. little challenge there. Let's also talk about um, something I think is terrific that I did not know about until I went to the website that you offer, and that's a speaker's bureau. Mm -hmm. Talk about the speaker's bureau and, and how that would work for someone in the community. So um, if individuals are looking for a speaker to come, so sometimes you have senior citizens, groups around Albany County or schools, a lot of our schools call and say, I'm looking for someone to come talk about the Constitution or I'm looking for someone to come talk about the legal process in itself, um, we'll put a request out to membership and look for those who are interested in actually speaking and participating. So that is a service that we, we are always happy to do if someone is looking for someone to come speak to their organization or their community group. What a great example when you said the Constitution because I would never, I don't know why, but I wouldn't have thought of reaching out to the Bar Association for that, you know, right off the bat, I would be thinking of, oh, what, where can we go to a university or a history professor or something? Um, but that's certainly wonderful. And I think that probably um, you get a lot of requests, too, with wills and elder mm -hmm. issues and things like that. Absolutely. Probably. I think that is probably one of the um, largest areas um, we get requests for. Um, and again, schools, the civics classes, government, constitution, um, that is another, I think, very big area that we provide a service to local schools. Wow. So what is the process then? Do you go online or do you make a phone call to Phone uh, call to the office I think is always good. To, the best way to do it is so that we get the information, what exactly you're looking for. We find sometimes that people are looking for a speaker but they may not know exactly the right area of law or the way in which you're looking for the speaker to communicate. So I think having that conversation to get a better sense so that we can match the best person to come speak to your group. Mm -hmm. What's the lead time that you need? I would say three or four weeks is usually um, most beneficial, so that, that way you can screen the membership and we make sure we have the right person in place. Also talk about now a little bit um, about uh, something you held in Syracuse, and it was uh, in conjunction um, with the Fahey Bill. When I say the Fahey Bill, I am talking about indigent yes. defense. And um, the Fahey Bill, which was in large part written um, at the behest of Albany County Executive Dan mm -hmm. McCoy. Talk about a little bit about the, the gathering in Syracuse, the, the discussion about and when, where, in fact, the Bar Association uh, is headed in their support of, of this bill. So unfortunately we weren't able to be at the event in Syracuse but the board of directors has um, voted to support um, 
the bill, and we were um, present when the county executive announced his support with Assemblywoman Fahey, I think it was back in January, February, before the bill had actually been introduced. And our criminal lawyers um, here in Albany County feel as though that would provide better representation. We understand the cost burden to the county. Um, making sure that people have representation in criminal matters is something that we all believe in and is part of our canons. Um, and so how do you provide better services for those individuals is very similar to the work that we've done on the civil legal service side of making sure that people have representation. So we are in full support of the Fahey bill. The board of directors have agreed to support that bill. We've been in conversations with other local bar associations across the state as well as New York State Bar Association to try and gather their support for that legislation as well. And I should step back a little bit. Thank you for giving me some time while I had that frog in my throat <laughs> to, uh, to, not to not to choke there, but I should step back and explain a little bit that um, indigent legal defense um, can be very, very expensive very to counties, expensive. a very necessary um, component, but very expensive. And the question has come up, number one, um, you know, back since 1963, mm -hmm. this is something that counties, um, uh, the state mandated that counties provide. Right. Um, but one of the issues is even with the indigent legal defense, um, the counties do not necessarily always have the same resources that, that mm -hmm. a prosecutor would have right. uh, resources. And so, so there's been some discussion about an inequity mm -hmm. in representation. Um, what the Fahey bill does ask for and is that the state actually pick up the tab for this. Mm -hmm. What do I mean, even with the support that it's had and it seems to be gaining momentum, um, even you know after it's taken a while to, to get to this point a year later, what do you think the chances are that this will actually come to pass? Hopefully we'll have a good chance um, this session. I think it is always difficult when you look at something that shifts um, county cost to state cost and where we are in the state budget, but you know the state does look like it has increased revenues. We do have some additional settlement money, and I know you have a great sponsor who's going to fight hard for that legislation, so hopefully we can be helpful um, when the legislature comes back in January. Well, good. We will, uh, we will hold you to that. I know county Executive McCoy, that's one of the uh, his top priorities, and it has been, so I know that uh, he will stay on that. As we uh, wind down, we've got a, a couple of minutes left. Um, what do you see as the future for the Albany County Bar Association? Oh, as, you're, as you are winding down and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and getting ready to take on your new role. I think the future for the Albany County Bar Association is building on the past 115 years. We celebrated our 115th anniversary um, back in October, and I think it's a great, it's a strong association. So building on our pro bono services, making sure that we are providing those services that are needed here in Albany County. There are so many people who call our office every day. We can't fulfill all of that need um, that is out there. So hopefully the state will continue to provide grant money so that we can continue to build those services services, and at the same time, build our network of members who take pro bono cases, making sure that we continue to provide great continuing legal education programs so we have trained, educated attorneys that are here in Albany County, and finding ways to partner with our courts in our county. It is, it is a great partnership that this association has, and I think that's the future, is how do you build those partnerships? How reliant are you, um, just very quickly, on, on state funding? So all of our pro bono civil legal services are pretty much 100% supported by grant funding. Um, and the current Chief Judge Lippman, who is stepping down at the end of December, fought really hard to increase the amount of funding that was available. And so as the state funding has increased, we have been able to apply and access additional money, which allowed us to hire the two part-time attorneys that we now have, expand the number of hours that we have the help center at Family Court, as well as expand the Attorney for the Day program, which I don't think we talked about, but we provide a attorneys for the day twice a month with legal aid for landlord-tenant matters in, in city court. So if individuals are facing eviction, um, we have attorneys who are there when they do evictions on Fridays who can represent those individuals to help them negotiate and, and work out a deal with their landlord because we don't want anyone to be evicted and homeless. Sure. Um, so we try to work out those issues and it's a support that we provide to city court, which improves their efficiency in court operations. So it's when people show up, that's when they fight? They, they, they do. do they show up on with their summons that they for eviction and um, the judges help to you know announce that there's attorneys available and if an individual is looking for some assistance we try to provide that assistance during that um, court hearing. All right. Well, thank you and good luck as you thank transition you. into uh, into your role with the foundation, Marquita. 
Good luck. We look we look forward to uh, to seeing all kinds of new and exciting exciting things happening as you uh, step into I, this role. I think it is going to be a very exciting couple of years. Yes. And I think that probably we should just direct everyone to um, uh, albanycountybar.org uh, for any of the uh, the program information that we talked about yesterday. And the phone number is all over there as well as a brief summary on the services. So we encourage people to pick up the phone and just see what we're about and see if we can help them. Wonderful. Once again, that's albanycountybar.org. I'm Mary Rosak. This has been Albany County News. Thanks for joining us. We hope you'll come back again soon.